I suppose when you're about 17 and a half, your perspective on the world is that it can be crafted into whatever image you see fit. And it's idealistic, but not a bit if you see it that way initially. At 17 and a half, a 10 year plan symbolises infinity. Perhaps you remember 10 years into the past, and so by symmetry, 10 years into the future is literally a lifetime away. We walk out of school taught to believe that we can become lawyers and doctors, and we foster and adopt these ideas as our own because we know no different. To a 17 and a half year old, these prospects are embossed with a glow, perhaps naive, that if we strive to achieve all that is asked of us, we can become all that we want to be. From the start line, it seems so linear. I always held that with enough commitment and idealism, life would afford idyllic contentment, right and wrong entrenched, cemented, into the places where they should. One foot follows the other in simple progression. This was my first impression of the world. And I suppose the story begins like so many others, in kissing goodbye my mother and boarding a plane to university. In New Zealand, the word city means really only one place. For many, the one face of the country is mountains and forests and sand, but in the north, the skyscrapers of Auckland stand substantially higher than the trees. From the offset, I was aware it would be a different world, but off I set to feel it unfurl. I was a law student, wanted money and prestige to make girls feeble at the knees. See, I'd been watching Boston Legal and it seemed that with the right cut of suit and a reasonable ability to know and understand the binary code that is the law of the land, a man could earn himself both an attractive wife and a sports car. This is what I wanted thus far. I wish I could go back and say, ha ha, you had it wrong. Intercept myself one night at the bar on one of the many occasions I was too pissed and in some ways at this stage would have been more receptive. There are people in their lives with true turbulence, and I can never claim to be one of them. My disturbances were merely expectations that never materialised, synthesised music and sterilised smiles, filled the hours as hundreds of people newly liberated from childhood attempted to stylize themselves into the well-oiled leadership of tomorrow. And I followed headlong. And when you charge down a road with such force, an unseen curve derails you worse than the others. One girl stood out as the loveliest I have met. But cells beneath the skin had corrupted and conspired against her and taken her father months before the lava of her home city had built to the point of a massive tectonic plate slip and the forces that control fate decided she was due another hit. Looking back, I'm ashamed she'd listened to me whinging about shit. But she was seeing a campus guidance counsellor and suggested I put my name down. So I did. I sat there feeling like one of the people that wastes other professional people's time. I basically knew what I wanted, I was basically fine, the session coincided with a particularly boring lecture and I told myself it was an ingenious scythe, but I remember the texture of the ceiling because I couldn't meet the woman's eye when she asked, is there anything I can help you with? I put on a brave face and said all was okay. Her name was Jane and she saw through me like cellophane as I fell apart cardboard in the rain she said have you got anxieties i said perhaps she said have you hurt yourself i said i'd run my hands under the hot taps once or twice she said how did that feel i said not very nice a pen hovered above the tick box and she said have you thought about taking your own life i said christ that's not a bad idea jane and i'll explain what i meant by that because it's not a reference to balconies or train track but the moment in time when i engaged with the notion of taking my life back that the blueprint assigned in much earlier days no longer had to define the way I behaved. I walked out of a guidance counsellor's office newly set on the idea of leaving this world, which under normal circumstances would be indicative of Jane doing a very, very bad job. But the world in question was merely the one I'd been assigned on first impression. I opened the hostile atlas, open to suggestion, then jacked in law without hesitation. When you've put aside however many years of your life without really thinking about it, and then plans change unexpectedly and you have them back, it's a glorious feeling. I'd always assumed I'd start living after the degree at 22 or 23. I flew out of the country at 19. As the Boeing 747 left the tarmac, it was a time machine. As decisions go, it was one of the hardest, but I can never regret getting into the TARDIS. An unfinished degree also creates irony in stealing moments by never taking the time. Pages torn from a stolen atlas have guided me well enough, but now the paper's creased and the road has been rough at times I look back over my shoulder at those I left behind. With their nice houses and fast cars, my backpack 
pack looks small and they're living so large but they'll never know the motorbike is the last vestige of the cavalry charge or how it feels to beat your chest and earn your scars I wouldn't stop if I could if I kiss ass now it'll be in the throes of passion I want to live before I die or it goes out of fashion because I'm not well rounded enough to be a gear in the machine I want to be the rebel alliance on Tatooine and if you sink when you swim it just proves you're not hollow I want to be the moment in time when Bilbo thought YOLO and walked out into the blue without shoes I want to be the fresh ink of a foolish tattoo on someone like you and for better or worse we'll coexist together I'll be the visual embodiment of a delusion of forever etched in scrawled text across a ribbed cage I want to take this stage with two parts love and one part rage because this has got to be more than gap years and bucket lists I can't go back to being some fucking yuppie infecting VIP lists like well groomed herpes amassed like an army of Xerxes and I fear the city streets are too broad to hold them this hashtag generation has become too strong and before long world wide webs will tangle into Gordian knots as Instagram privatizes the pyramids and Angor Watt. And against this I fear there's no one to lead us ahead because Bob Dylan's tired and Hemingway's dead. Our cause is the backup plan of the bad gambler. But courage is the weaker man picking the fight. Courage is the moth that flies away from the light. And I hope they're right when they say the pen is mightier than the sword because in this age of abbreviations we can bring a barrage of words down upon them. There's got to be something more to say than a Twitter update. It's like we're all sitting stagnating waiting on life's tax rebate for a second coming when all will miraculously fall in line sitting with glazed eyes watching time tick by. I'm of the opinion we're blood and we're bones and we're grime For 80 years if we're lucky and then we all die And whether we cry a river about it or not The ferryman's still coming to take us across regardless So look for the beauty in the broken harness And be less concerned with the moments farthest away in life Because who can say those days will be our definition I want to live like the future itself as a prison But as one of the few inmates with a mad vision for escape So let's angrily incinerate candles before they're planted on countdown birthday cakes and make a final stand like the man in a red cape stood on the side of a skyscraper. But I won't end in paperwork or pavement cracks because before the fall I'll take my life back.